Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Come in, Claudia. It's me, Mr. Norton. Oh. You're working? Maybe I'm disturbing you. Oh, no, no. Come on in. This is a very informal house whose basic philosophy appears to be that work was created to be disturbed. <laughs> Come on in, Claudia. It's me, David. Oh, hello, Mama. You're working. Maybe I'm disturbing you. No, 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 no. Come right on in. You are working. Oh, hello, Jeffrey. Think nothing of it. Hello, Mrs. Brown. David. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. I think you're me. <laughs> I can't find anybody. The house is so quiet. Remarkable and unusual. You haven't any idea where Mama is? Not the foggiest. But it's not like her to disappear into thin air like this. Oh, she'll probably turn up someday. You don't sound as if you were working. No? I'm coming in. <laughs> oh, Mama, you're here. Hello, Jeff. Uh, hello, Mrs. Norton. What's all going on in here? <clears throat> we were having a conference. About what? We haven't decided yet. Without me? We were waiting for you. Well, I'm here. What shall we talk about? Say, Mr. Norton, this is a wonderful ride. That's as good a thing to talk about as anything. What? Trout fishing. David never minds talking about trout fishing. Jeff, your dad's been on the stream with me when he would have given his left arm, uh, not his casting arm, to own that one you're holding in your hand. Gee. Uh, do you like to fish? Dr. Brainerd took me out a year ago a couple of times. Who's Dr. Brainerd? He was the headmaster of our school. He retired this year. Oh. He was going to take me fishing this year after the... the uh, after the examinations. He, he wrote a book on fishing. Oh, that Dr. Brainerd. I've read his book. A schoolmaster writing a book on fishing? Mm-hmm. Well, meeting's adjourned. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye what? I think we ought to go fishing. Well, I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> There's no work you won't do better for having got some of this fishing bug out of your system. Mrs. Brown, are you aware of the fact that you are a very wise woman and a very wonderful mother What about me? It was my idea. Remind me to tell you sometime that you are your mother's daughter and also a very wise woman. Thank you. Jeff. Hike upstairs and change your clothes. I've got a pair of wading boots to lend you. Say, Mr. Norton, that'd be great. I'll let you use this Leonard rod. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Norton. I think you're very generous, David. Generous? Yes, with all the work you have to do to take Jeff fishing. So unselfish of you. Ooh, well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Breaks my heart. What, my generosity? No. Jeff and the way he's feeling... Getting expelled from school. Somehow I can't think of that boy as a cheat. There yeah, wasn't any mistake about it, though. He was talking to me last but night. he's bright. He doesn't have to That's cheat. That's what puzzles me. His grades were good as gold. Maybe there was some extenuating circumstance. Yeah, there probably was. However, the particular code of Roger and Jeff could more easily condone murder than it could cheating. But he's a good boy. Mama divides things into good things and bad things. Mama is, as I said a moment ago, a very wise old duck. I'm all ready, Mr. Norton. Be right with you. The rest of the gear's in the hall closet. Goodbye, darling. When will you be back? When they get back. I know more about men who go fishing than you do, Claudia. And we'll have fish for dinner? We sure will. And we'll have some hamburger steak in the icebox just for insurance. Pessimist. Just a wise old duck, <laughs> The man I happen to have been married to, your father, he used to go fishing on occasion. It's six o'clock. What do you suppose has happened to them? Uh, fishing. But at this hour? Your father would sometimes fish in the dark if the fish were biting, and sometimes when they weren't. I'm glad we had some hamburger steak. Woo! Hey, we're home! Talk of the devil. Well... You two look a sight. <laughs> Jeff went in over his waders and got soaking. Oh. I'll take a hot bath and get into some dry things immediately. That's just what he's going to do immediately. Oh, I'm all right. Well, how many fish? Three, not too big. Uh, Mr. Norton caught them. Jeff hooked a really big one, it, huge. It got away. Oh, that's too bad. Let's see, three fish and four grown people. It's a good thing we have hamburger ready. Hamburger <laughs> and trout. It's a good combination. I've eaten it before. Spoken like the true mother-in-law of a fisherman. <laughs> Hike along, Jeff, and get out of those wet things and into a hot tub. I won't be long. 
But you had a good time. I had a great time. Oh, David, the tip of your rod is broken. Oh, things like that happen. Your best rod. Mm, my second best now. <laughs> I've got another tip. Anyway, it was well worth it. it must have been a very big fish. Mm, it was, Mama. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, supper not ready yet? It'll be ready in half an hour. You know, you can't cook up a great mess of fish like you brought home in the twinkle of an eye. <laughs> All right, Twinkle Eyes. I, I want to make a telephone call. The picture of a happy man. Operator. Operator, long distance. I want North Haven, Massachusetts. The Winegate School. Yes, a person to person to Dr. Brainerd. Mm. Private? No, no. Mind if I sit down in the arm of your chair? What's up? You usually choose my lap. It isn't easy to talk on the telephone mm -hmm. with someone on your lap. Mm -hmm. Thoughtful of you. I thought you'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Yes, Dr. Brainerd? Dr. Brainerd, personally, please. What was it that swallowed the what that looked so self-satisfied about it? The cat that swallowed the mouse. Well, what happened? Well, oh, hello? Dr. Brainerd? Uh, this is David Norton speaking. David Norton. I have read your book about fishing the wet fly upstream. Yes. Silly, the great modern miracle of the telephone reduced to two grown men talking about fish. Well, that's what How'd I How'd you like your trout cooked, David? Broiled with a little bacon? Uh-huh. He likes them with a halo on a gold filigree plate. Well, the trick is to take up the line so there's no drag. Sit down, Mama. This is good. Well, Dr. Brainerd, what I really called you about was to tell you a fish story. He catches a nine-inch trout, Mama, and he makes a long-distance call to tell the world about it. Yes, sir. Well, yes, it happened this afternoon. A young man you went fishing with a year ago. Uh, no, I'll, I'll tell you his name later. I was up on the bank behind him, and he couldn't see me. He'd hooked a big one, 15, 15, 16 inches at the least. And he played him like an expert. <laughs> yes, sir, it was a sight to see. Well, Mr. Trout connected with a sunken log. Yes. <laughs> yes, well, it, it's happened to the best of us, you're right. Well, what happened next shouldn't have happened to a Leonard Rod, but that's happened to the best of us, too. No. 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 No, he didn't break the tackle. He went He went right after it. You said he fell in. Shh, Claudia. Anyway, he got wet. Uh, yes, Doctor. Oh, it was colder than Greenland's icy shore. When he got to the log, it was deep, so he went under. Oh, yes, yes, the fish was still on. No, he hadn't broken free. And when he came up, Doctor, he had the fish in his hands. Oh, it was all of 16 inches. No. No, he didn't. He unhooked the fish and slipped it back into the water, Doctor. As he was dripping water on the bank, I, I asked him why. Yeah. Well, he said it wouldn't have been fair to take the fish. That fly fishing was a sport. That it wouldn't be according to the rules to take him that way. And that the fish had outsmarted him and had earned his freedom and a... Better fisherman would have kept him away from the log. Oh, yes, and mind you, Doctor, he thought nobody was watching him. Yes. Well, I thought you'd like that story. You're teaching a nice brand of sportsmanship in your school, Doctor. You'd like to go fishing with him again? Well, well, well that might be difficult to arrange, Doctor. You see, he was dismissed from school three days ago for cheating. Yes, it's young Jeffrey Killian I'm talking about. I know it doesn't hang together and make sense. He was a... Yeah, he was an A student. Well, that doesn't hang together either. Well, the family picture's none too happy, Doctor. The boy worships his father, but they're not too close. Oh, probably all mixed up with trying to be perfect for his father. Oh, yes, that's exactly my point. It is sort of unfinished business on the part of the school. To err is human. Thank you, Mother, thank you. 
As to err is human, and the school was perhaps a little less than divine, Doctor. Well, yes, I agree with you. There's too much in the boy to send him out into the world with the label of a cheat. You will? What can I tell him? Well, I don't know which he'll look forward to more, Doctor. And, Doctor, I uh, wouldn't retire from the school too completely. I think the boys need your kind of a man. And probably your new headmaster does, too. Well, thank you. Well, by the way, is your successor a fisherman? No? Well, maybe you'd better take him out on the stream. There's a lot about human nature to be learned on the butt end of a trout rod. <laughs> yeah. Well, goodbye, Doctor. Yes, I'd like to meet you on Whitewater, too, someday. David, tell us, what did he say? What's he going to do? I've just made a date for Jeffrey to go fishing with Dr. Brainerd. He's to go up to school before it opens. That'll be the end of the trout season. Yes. And should it happen to rain too hard some morning, Dr. Brainerd will give Jeff another examination in American history. Hey, Jeff. Jeff, hurry on down when you're ready. I've got some news for you about a fishing trip. You mean we're going fishing again? Say, that's great. Well, when it comes about, I may be able to be with you. Do you know what I think? Yes, Mama. That I've married one of the finest, most wonderful fathers my sons could ever have. Sons? Are you expecting to have twins? I'd like to. I can't wait to have a whole big family full. And I can't wait until they're old enough to go fishing with David. Hey! Hey, you two! How long do we two fishermen have to wait until dinner? You know, I am famished. About 16 years to the dinner I'm thinking about, darling. Mm-hmm. Dum, dum, Do you ever stop in at your local youth center? Whether they're talking or dancing or playing games or listening to records, there's one thing certain. The young folks are drinking Coke. For where there's youth, there's Coca-Cola. That you can depend on. And one way to make your house popular with your children's friends is to keep a good supply of Coke on ice. It's a friendly custom and a growing one. Gee, Mr. King, isn't Mr. Norton a swell guy? Oh, they don't make them any better, Jeff. Their kids will be awful lucky. I wish my parents... Oh, well. Oh, I don't know your mother, Jeffrey, but I think your dad's a fine man. Dad's all right. If I saw him more. But it's kind of hard for him to have me around, mother not being home much of the time. I, I hate to have to tell her. Maybe you won't have to tell her. Maybe Claudia and David will do it for you. Uh, what would you say if your mother were to show up here tomorrow? Oh, she won't show up. That's not like mother. Well, come around tomorrow, Jeff, and we'll find out what your mother's really like. So long, bud. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.